Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, vacation Bible school is such a great time. It really is, and it really has kind of a direct bearing on what we're going to talk about this morning. You're here. You know, when I was a little boy, probably as little as some of those who were just sitting up here, living in Bemidji, I remember it was either Sunday school or vacation Bible school, I forget which. But I remember the teacher had one of those little milk curtains like we used to get back in school or in Sunday school when we were going to have a break or something like that, usually with a graham cracker or something similar. The top had been cut off. She filled it with dirt. She gave me a seed. It was pretty little. And she watched as I planted it, making sure that I didn't push it down all the way down to the bottom or anything like that. She watched me, and then I took that thing home, whatever it was. I remember giving it to my mom. I've got a plant for you. And of course, all she sees is a cut-off milk carton with dirt in it. But she got it. She understood what I meant. And she put it on a windowsill. And I checked that thing faithfully. Mom would watch as I watered it to make sure I didn't give it too much water. And every day, I'd stand on the couch, leaning over the couch like this, looking to see if anything was happening. Well, nothing happened. I got bored. I quit doing it. Eventually, Mom noticed that there was a little sprout of something growing up. She said, come over here, come over here. So again, I got on the couch and leaned over and looked at the windowsill, and sure enough, there was this little green shoot coming up. Well, that was pretty exciting. I was expecting more, but that was still exciting. So I watched it every day for a while. Well, I didn't see any change, so I quit watching it. But eventually, Mom said, come here and look at this. There were leaves and a little bud, and a little while later, there was actually a flower. Now, I have no idea what it was. I don't have a a clue. It was pretty, whatever it was. I think Mom took it and planted it in her garden outside. Kind of interesting, though, the patience or the impatience of a youngster expecting immediate results from that little teeny seed that had been planted. And that reminded me, or I was reminded of that, I should say, by our parables this morning. Jesus is talking in parables about the reign of God, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God now is not a geographical location, as we usually associate with the idea of a kingdom. Instead, it's God's reign. God's reign here, in us, through us. The already not yet, as you often hear Lutherans say. But now think about this for a moment. I told you how little that seed was, and Jesus talks about the kingdom of God being like this little teeny mustard seed. Well, Christian faith started like that way back when, a couple thousand years ago. It was so small that I'm sure most people back then thought it was pretty insignificant if they thought about it at all. And I'd be surprised if most people thought about it, at least to begin with. It was invisible, or nearly so. But you know what? Growth came. Growth came as people went about their business, doing whatever people do. And if anybody had been watching Christianity back in those early days, watching for growth, they probably would have given it up after a while as a rather boring task. They would have found something else to occupy their time. As I said, this parable of Jesus reminded me of me planting that seed way back when, and the growth coming when I'm not looking. I imagine I might be able to say that, yeah, I participated in it. I pushed that seed down in the soil. But growth came, but not under my control. Nor was it subject to my desire, even as a little boy, nor was it subject to my desire to speed up the process. There wasn't anything I could do to make the growth happen. The seed produced the results that were inherent within it. Now think about this for a moment. You and I scatter the seeds of God's reign in an incredible number of places, in many ways. As you can readily imagine, though, the results vary. Sometimes it looks like we've got a bumper crop. Other times, it looks like there's no crop at all. Notice I said sometimes it looks like we have a bumper crop. 
And that kind of points out something that we often do. We're pretty quick to take the credit when there is a bumper crop, when good results are coming in. And sometimes we're pretty quick to blame the poor soil or the person doing the planting when the results are poor. And one of the messages of our parable this morning is that we don't take the credit, nor do we assign blame for the coming of the kingdom. All we have to do, all we have to do is be faithful in scattering those seeds, the seeds of the kingdom. We only have to be faithful in the planting. God will bring it to harvest God's own good time. The kingdom of God comes, not as a crusade, but as a seed. You know, and there are so many ways, so many ways that we sow the seeds of the gospel, the good news of Jesus. Yeah, some of it happens in our social ministry. When we're feeding the hungry, whether we're donating food to the food shelf or actually serving in one of our food closets or soup kitchens, I should say. Some of it happens when we're donating clothing and taking that clothing to those in need that they will be adequately clothed for the winter months, that they'll have good shoes, good boots, good coats, whatever it takes. Some of it comes when we visit people who cannot get out, people who are homebound or confined to a nursing home or care facility of some sort. Sometimes we're spreading the seeds and we don't realize it, but what we're doing is we are showing the love of God, giving the love of God to those who would not otherwise have it. Imagine how hard it would be to imagine a loving God if your life has been one of rejection and going without all the necessities. You know, we share the love of God with those in need, and when we do, we're sowing the seeds of the kingdom. We scatter seeds far and near when we care for each other, within our congregation, within our community, and in the greater community. Out there, way out there. Marge Holmstrom and her son Murray are leaving for Africa pretty shortly. I think they're going to be scattering an awful lot of seeds. Seeds that have already, in some cases, been scattered will grow. And they will be scattering even more as they go about what they're going to be doing there in mission. You know, we scatter these seeds. We care for each other within our community and without. And we don't really realize the effect that that has on those who see it. You know how rare it is for a group of people, for a community of people to genuinely care for each other and for those outside their group? Caring for those that are considered outsiders or marginalized? That is really rare. And that is an incredible witness that we often don't even realize that we're making. We sow the seeds of the kingdom when we share our faith, our walk of faith with others. Even when we're hesitant to share things that we sometimes think are pretty personal. And of course, we want to protect ourselves. I understand that. We all do. We also don't want to offend anybody. I understand that also. But our faith, our faith The seeds that are within us are the greatest treasure that we have, and they are to be shared. Seeds of the kingdom are meant to be scattered far and wide by you and by me. And the thing is, hard to realize, but the thing is, the more we give those seeds away, the more we scatter them and sow them, the more we ourselves have. And we scatter the seeds through our witness, through our lives, through our living. And we do even more. We support mission outreach, missionaries, and disaster relief through the ELCA. We support evangelists and what we call church planters. That's what we do. And when we do that, we still have the responsibility to sow seeds ourselves. But with that kind of support given to others, we're also scattering those seeds in places that we ourselves cannot be, have never been. We sow these seeds. We scatter seeds of the kingdom. We cover them with prayer. Lots and lots of prayer. You know, this past week, I mentioned VBS. 
It's my favorite week of the year outside of Holy Week. On Thursday, several of us adults gathered together in the Celebration Center. You know, I sat by myself, someone else sat a, way, a ways away, and we gave young boys and girls a chance to come up and pray with us, one-on-one, -on -one, with an adult, sometimes with me, their pastor. It was great. You know, I've shared with you before the kinds of things that kids come up and ask us to pray for, whether it's a lizard or a dog, in this case I prayed for a puppy, that it might be cared for, but I also prayed for moms and dads and grandparents. All these things literally bring tears to my eyes. But prayer, whether with these kids as individuals or in group, was something that was emphasized the entire week long. Aaron Carlgard led the openings and the closings and several things in between. And one of the things Aaron did and did extremely well is she would pray out loud and she would have the kids repeating what she said right after her. It was wonderful. Can you imagine over a hundred young voices saying out loud prayers, sometimes with great exuberance, as you can imagine, not just saying it, but yelling it. There were times when I forgot we were in prayer. It was that much fun watching and hearing these young people pray. You know, and seeds were planted then. Seeds with prayer and covered with prayer. But the idea of and the kids wouldn't know this, intercessory prayer, corporate prayer, individual prayer. They learned all about prayer and all kinds of different prayers. And seeds were planted. And the idea was really kind of not driven home, but reinforced, reinforced constantly that prayers are one of the ways that we offer our seeds to God because he is the only one who can bring them to harvest we trust in God, and that's the other thing that our kids learned all week long. Trust in God. They sang it. They had verses that emphasized it. They did it. It was great. We trust in God to accomplish the work that God began way back when that very first dawn shone a long, long time ago. And trusting in God is hard work. Very hard work sometimes, and that's one of the reasons we emphasized it during Vacation Bible School, because our tendency is to want to take the credit when the sprouts begin to emerge, or to assign the blame when they don't. But we got to keep in mind, it's not our seed. It's not our doing that brings about the harvest. We've got nothing to do with it, whether there's growth or whether there isn't growth. But we, as servants of God, scatter the seed that has been entrusted to our care. It's God's power and God's power alone. Not man power, not woman power, not human power. It's God's power that makes the seed sprout and grow. And you and I, brothers and sisters, you and I have met the Lord of the harvest. We know the eternal faithfulness of our Lord Jesus, who has arisen. God's creation comes to its fullness in Christ, and someday, someday it will all come about. But until then, we only have to be faithful in our sowing the seeds of the kingdom, the gospel, the good news, saved by grace through faith. We only have to be faithful in trusting in God, our God of the harvest. Amen. Mm -hmm.